Hello, entrepreneurs. Joe DeChara coming to you live from downtown Flushing, New York. Once again, for another amazing episode of How to Win at Business. And today, we're on the same subject as yesterday and a lot of other times, the IRS and, and what's going on and what's in, what's in store for us uh, over the next 10, 15 years, believe it or not. And what I'd like to do here is just uh, share this slide. But first, if you're watching live, give me a hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay. And I'd like to invite you to uh, chat with me. Go to Time with Joe if any of this stuff resonates with you. If you want to talk about your business, I love talking about uh, business in general, taxes, how to reduce taxes, uh, how to avoid taxes legally. So, uh, that's my story, and let's let's go to the slideshow now. So the IRS is, is definitely out of control, and I'm going to give you uh, a little example here. So this is a letter that we got from the IRS on March 10th, responding to a letter that we sent. Actually, this was, was a, uh, a return that we had amended, uh, and we did it on, uh, well, this is when they processed it, September 8th, 2020. So if you go September, October, November, December, January, February, March, it took them six months just to tell us <laughs> that they need another 60 days. Well, it's beyond 60 days now, and, and we still haven't heard from them. So something is seriously wrong at the IRS. Welcome to the machine. The machine is broken, okay? It's important to understand the IRS structure and what their mission is. So there's four main divisions of the IRS. What, what we deal with mostly is the small business and self-employed uh, section. Now, this is their mission. You know, every organization is supposed to have a mission, a purpose. And this is the small business and self-employed uh, mission. The first one is the underreporting tax gap. Now, what that means is people filed a return but didn't report all of their income. The second uh, problem that they want to talk about is the underpayment tax gap. So what this means is people that have filed, but they haven't paid all of their taxes. So then they're dealing with the largest collection agency in the world. Hi, Hi Lei, how are you? Thanks for uh, watching again. And last but not least, the non-filing tax gap. So let me just uh, share something with you from another uh, source that I have. Uh, over 26 million taxpayers owe the IRS over $1 trillion. Now, that's people that have filed and the IRS knows what they owe and they're all in collection. Now, 26 million. Now, I think that's almost 10% of the whole population of the United States. I think we're about uh, 250 million, I'm not sure. But that includes children <laughs> and people that are retired. So anybody that has to file a tax return, that's a large percentage of taxpayers that owe money. There's 11.2 million in the collection division. So this doesn't really add up. Uh, 26 million. So what that tells me is 15 million people, they might be deemed as they're never going to pay, they're, they're uncollectible. Uh, I'm just guessing at that, but those numbers don't add up. Now, seven and a half million people don't even file their, their tax returns. That's the non-filing tax gap. Th that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And, and there's reasons for that, folks. One of the reasons is they don't have a tax person. Now, tax people, you know, the, the uh, 
I think the perception out there is that tax people are expensive. Well, it's more expensive if you don't hire them. It's like not fixing your brakes. Eventually, you know, there used to be a commercial that said you could pay me now or pay me later. If you, fi if you fix your brakes, if you change the whatever needs to be fixed before it becomes a problem, you're not going to pay as much. So tax professionals, and that, that's not just CPAs, it's enrolled agents and tax attorneys. Now, I have a, a penalty abatement template, and, and I think I'm skipping ahead here, but what happens is when people get a penalty, you can get it removed if you have what they call reasonable cause. And if you use the right language and you format the letter the right way, because this is, and this is something I've been using for like over 20 years and it works like a charm. You state your case, you tell them what happened, what sort of reasonable cause you have. And guess what? One of the uh, reasonable causes is uh, advice from a professional that was wrong. And, and we use that a lot. Even when I make mistakes sometimes, you know, we've, we've had instances where uh, an extension got, got caught up in, in my tax program and I, it looked like it was filed and it wasn't. My client got a penalty and I blamed myself. I said, listen, they, they hired me to do this. I'm a CPA. I didn't, I didn't file it. It was a mistake because of the software. And almost 100% of the time, we're successful on this. In fact, I don't even remember a time when I, this didn't work. Uh, so, yeah, that, this is about reasonable cause. So another thing I want to offer anybody, if you're watching, the, if you're live, like Lay, if you're not live, uh, if you contact me, I will gladly give you that template. If you have to call the IRS, <laughs> now this might seem bizarre, but this comes from my aunt who worked there for over 25 years, and she was one of the people that, that took the call. The best time to call is a few minutes before they open, and I'll tell you why. First of all, Wednesday is the least amount of calls that come in, and when you, you get into the key early, you're, you're ahead of everybody. Everybody else might be calling at 8, 30, 9. Well, if you call and get in the key first, you're going to you're gonna get, get a live person. Now, in today's, unfortunately, the way things are today, you don't uh, always get through. It, it's not easy. But you got to, and I've talked about this a number of times, you got to just keep calling. You got to be tenacious. You have to uh, stay on it. There's no other way. I have a client, uh, she got a, a notice, and I talked about this a couple of nights ago, where they said she owed $34,000 and she already paid it. And it took her three hours. She was probably on hold for two hours and then whatever, it was a simple solution, but they have to go through a whole series of questions, identify you, then look you up, figure out what the problem is. And hopefully you get somebody that knows what they're doing because I believe right now, they got a lot of people working from home that are temps, people that don't have experience because I've had to talk to people that obviously didn't have experience. Now, one of the things, the, the main issue tonight is I want to talk about tax resolutions. What, what are tax resolutions? How do they come about? And how do we solve them? And this is what we are looking at. In January, the IRS announced that they are going to ramp up enforcement worse than it is now. Part of, and I think it's the American Family Act or one of these new bills, they're going to hire 87, they're going to basically double 
their workforce. They're going to hire a lot of revenue agents, a lot of uh, revenue officers. And the difference is a revenue officer is somebody that will handle an audit. A revenue agent will, is, is the collection person. Okay, and that's the difference. Uh, millions of people didn't file 2020 because they just didn't have the money to pay. So <laughs> they're going to be getting notices. They're going to be under the, under the radar. And in 2020, the information I have is that hundreds, hundreds of thousands of businesses closed for good and owe payroll taxes. Now, payroll taxes are huge because it's what they call trust fund taxes. If, if you go out of business and you owe vendors, you owe other people, it's hard for them to collect. If, the cor if you're a corporation or an LLC, because you're not personally liable, okay? Payroll taxes, you are personally liable. Payroll and sales taxes. So they can come after you. They can give you what they call a 100% penalty. So let's say you owed $5,000. They could make it ten plus interest and penalties on top of that. Uh, so, so that's that. So now th this is what happens when you, if you don't file, they're, they're going to catch up with you because technology right now is, is they, they just have access to so many uh, areas that they didn't have access to before. Uh, did you know that if you change your address now with the post office, it goes to the IRS? Hey, Tim, how are you? You don't have these kind of problems, so. Uh, but if you know anybody that does, you could send them to me and tell them to go to timewithjoe.com. Uh, so this is what happens when you go into collections. You really only have four options. You can do what they call an offer and compromise where you pay uh, less than what you owe. Basically, that's a situation where you can show the IRS that you're never going to pay this bill anyway. Maybe you're retired, you owe too much money. I've done a lot of offer and compromises, and, and most of them go through because I'm not going to do one if, if you have like a 40-year-old businessman that's healthy and, and he's got a thriving business. They're not going to accept that. Uh, another avenue is you can do an installment agreement. We've done a lot of installment agreements, so you can pay over time. Now, they also have a partial pay installment agreement. Okay, so that, that's like a combination between an offer and compromise and, and an installment agreement. And, and the last uh, item is what, something I just covered is the penalty abatement. A lot of people get hit with penalties that, that, you, that can be abated. Uh, now... Yeah, let's see what this, uh, okay, so there's value. Now, here's the thing, folks, because there are no coincidences. In 2009, 2009 to 2012, the IRS upped their workforce. I think they hired 25,000 people uh, basically to collect money. W what a coincidence. In 2008, we had the financial crisis, remember? And they had to bail out huge companies. There's no coincidences. What happened now? The IRS, what they want to do is collect $7 trillion over the next 10 years by hiring all of these new people. Think about it. They're doubling their workforce, and they're going to be after us. Now, what I offer people, and this isn't a pitch. I just want to tell you what I do. We go stealth. We have tax strategies where you don't, you fly under the radar. You don't raise any red flags. You don't let them know uh, if you're doing something, okay? And hopefully you're not doing something, but you know, if you're doing something like check cashing, 
which is ridiculous because check cashing is highly regulated. They get all of your information. So if you're doing check cashing and you think you're getting away with something, you're not. I had to fire a client uh, last summer because about two months after I hired him, he came clean with me because, you know, the numbers just didn't add up. He was paying his guys off the books and, and the only way he could do that was to get cash. So he was cashing over $300,000 a year in checks. I told him, what I told him was you need to get a criminal tax attorney. <laughs> because if you don't, th he's like prime, prime to be audited. And, and not only that, he's in California. So he had illegal people working for him. He's going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, it might take a couple of years, but now with all of those revenue <laughs> agents, they're going to have plenty of people to track uh, guys like him down. And that's my story tonight. I'm sticking with it. Hopefully, you don't have one of these tax issues. But if you know somebody that does, uh, you can send them to me. And hopefully I can steer them in the right direction. So God bless. Uh, thank you, Lay and, and Tim for, for joining. Uh, and over and out, I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you.